共同为十月七日在以色列丧生的所有以色列平民和外国国民，以及在加沙地带和包括东耶路撒冷在内的西岸丧生的所有巴勒斯坦平民，在加沙地带丧生的联合国工作人员、医疗卫生工作者和记者，默哀一分钟。我请全体起立，为他们默哀一分钟。默哀毕。Hospital corridors crammed with the injured, the sick, the dying, morgues overflowing, surgery without anesthesia, tens of thousands of displaced people sheltering at hospitals, families crammed into overcrowded schools desperate for food and water, more than 10,800 people have now been killed in Gaza, almost 70% of them women and children. On average, a child is killed every 10 minutes in Gaza. 1.5 million people have been displaced and are looking for shelter anywhere they can find it but nowhere and no one is safe. Nowhere and no one is safe. As more and more people move to a smaller and smaller space, overcrowding is increasing the risks of outbreaks of diarrheal and respiratory diseases and skin infections. We continue to call for a ceasefire to prevent further deaths of civilians and further damage to Gaza's hospitals and health facilities. Mr. President, Excellencies, I understand what the children of Gaza must be going through because as a child, I went through the same thing. The same. The sound of gunfire and shells whistling through the air. The smell of smoke after they struck. Tracer bullets in the night sky. The fear, the pain, the loss. These things have stayed with me throughout my life. I know the smell, the image, of war. I, I know what war means. When my mother heard gunfire at night, she would make us sleep under the bed with more mattresses on top of one bed in the hope we might be protected if a shell fell on our house, a mother's instinct to save her kids. I also understand what the parents of Gaza are going through because in 1998, when war returned to Ethiopia, my country, my children had to hide in a bunker to shelter from the bombardment. I experienced war both as a child and as a parent. I know how the children are feeling and I know how the parents are also feeling. 
the children and parents of Gaza and Israel want and need the same thing that my family wanted and needed, peace and security. By the way, I never imagined that I would be the Director General of the World Health Organization because my mother's prayer was to survive just one day, one day. Maybe I'm lucky. Mr. President, <clears throat> small children carrying burdens that would break the shoulders of strong men, discovering the meaning of death before enjoying the taste of life. They are standing up, but everything else within them and around them has crumbled. The same suffering that traumatized my generation is now tormenting yet another Palestinian generation. We often said at that time, if the world knew, if it had witnessed our pain, if it had seen an entire people being killed and uprooted, it would have never allowed it to happen. We were so wrong. Over a week ago, Israel formed a task force, a task force to establish field hospitals in southern Gaza for all those in need. This team is in touch with countries around the world, and we are already seeing progress. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. Israel is in advanced talks with the United Arab Emirates, with the ICRC, and with other European countries regarding the establishment of field hospitals and floating hospital ships. Israel facilitated the Jordanian airdrop of medical aid to hospitals in northern Gaza. Thousands of tons of medical equipment and supplies have already entered Gaza. President. At the Sadly, Israel is doing far more for the well-being of Gazans than the WHO or any other UN body. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Hamas cynically and atrociously uses Palestinian civilians as human shields, putting its command posts, weapons, and ammunition within or beneath the very hospitals we are speaking about today. Director General Tedros uh, and Director General, these cowardly tactics do not diminish Israel's responsibility to distinguish between civilians and terrorists in its fight against Hamas. How Israel responds to Hamas attacks matters and Israel's response must be consistent with international humanitarian law. Rules like proportionality and precaution still apply. And the risks of harm to civilians at sites that Hamas is using for military purposes absolutely have to be considered when planning an operation. Thank you.